All right, right here on the Young Turks. So that's at 7 o'clock Eastern. Uh, it's on corporate power, uh, CEOs versus workers. He squared. He's in, in favor of corporate power. He's yeah, yeah, yeah. They, he got, says, they got to him. Yeah. He's going to do a spirited yeah. defense of public corporation CEOs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> or perhaps the other way. Uh, so 7 o'clock Eastern, tyt.com slash live. And Richard, did you write every single word that will come out of his mouth in that town hall? I uh, wrote every single thing he ever said. <laughs> he, he never talked about millionaires and billionaires before I uh, went to work for him. I said, I, I pitched it to him. That's and right. He liked it. Yeah, you went back in time. Exactly. You, got, you have a hot tub time machine, and you went back and told him, I think you're going to be onto this uh, something with this millionaires and billionaires stuff, but 40 years later. And you ought to oppose this Iraq war, too. It'll set you apart in about 30, <laughs> 25 years. Yeah, all right, so... Okay, I'm going to mention something, too, just super oh, quick. Yeah, so yeah. speaking of the Iraq war, so tonight, I don't remember where it is, but you could look it up somewhere mm. in the city of Los Angeles. Uh, 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 Rob Reiner has a new movie out called uh, uh, Shock and Awe, all right. which is about the two Let's see uh, if this Knight is Ritter correspondents and their boss, who were really the only guys to fully start to finish get that entire story correct, mm. that there were... They didn't say that they're lying. They were like, hey, man, they, they've created their own little intelligence unit. They are cherry-picking that intelligence. They're walling off the rest of the intelligence committee, and they've made their decision hey, it's working. to take advantage of 9-11 and go to war in Iraq. All right, uh, shocking and, off. And, uh, like, All right, I'm just sort of sitting oh, in my... Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's pretty neat. How do we look at it? In up? my cabin waiting for Google daylight. <laughs> Google it. Is the cue with been, Rob Reiner? I'll put it on uh, yes. uh, Twitter. Yes, the yeah. is with Rob yeah, Reiner. Yeah. I got that on Yeah. Uh, he gonna, said he was doing He's going to A. I'm at a Q. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Good division of radio. Yeah. All right. Ben Q. Mankiewicz. All right. Uh, John, lots of news. Go forward. There wasn't really any big stories. I guess we'll talk about solar energy. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein announced a series of new charges against 12 Russian uh, intelligence agencies arising out of the for daylight. investigation of the last election. Uh, the new counts, 11 of them, include charges of conspiracy by the Russian <laughs> intelligence uh, officials against the U.S., money laundering, uh, specifically with Bitcoin, reinforcing my idea that Bitcoin's inherently bad, and attempts to break into state election boards and other government agencies. So that's sort of the broad strokes, uh, but we want to go to Rod Rosenstein uh, from uh, earlier today during that press conference announcing uh, what the situation was. Oh, oh. That charges 12 Russian military officers by name for conspiring to interfere with the 2016 presidential election. The other oh. are charged with conspiring to hack into computers, steal documents, and release those documents with the intent to interfere in the election. One of those defendants and a 12th Russian military officer are charged with conspiring to infiltrate computers of organizations involved in administering elections, including state boards of election, secretaries of state, and companies that supply software used to administer elections. So already in there, uh, there's quite a bit to unpack. Uh, one part that we should mention is when they talk about the, the state boards of elections, uh, we had previously known that uh, voter data had been stolen. I believe at the time we thought it was 200,000 voters' data had been stolen. It turns out it's actually half a million voters' data had been stolen during that part of the operation. And uh, Rod Rosenstein mentioned that they know they have the particular names of the Russian uh, intelligence officers. Uh, those include both lieutenants, but also majors as well, showing that this was went up to higher levels of the GRU. Looks like they had one of them there behind Rod Rosenstein. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought that was the most interesting man alive. <laughs> yeah, totally. Young that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So look, guys, uh, there's a lot of uh, talk about Trump, and we're going to do that too, and it's very, very relevant. Uh, but I want you to focus on the most important thing here. They got into the uh, state boards of elections, and they were trying to uh, hack into the software that administers our elections. So that is super serious. If, if they were successful in that effort last time, or if they are successful in that effort next time, uh, that means they flat out just steal our democracy. That is not a hyperbole. If they are successful, that is hijacking the actual vote. Not a tweet, not some fake news on social media. That's going straight into our votes. So whether you're on the right or the left, the, the time to talk about how the, uh, this is hysteria and that there's actually no evidence has passed. If you made that argument before, I love you brothers and sisters, but you were wrong. So whether it's connected to Trump or not connected to Trump, that's an interesting discussion and we'll have it.
but it, the Russians definitely interfered in the election. And it wasn't just on social media, it was actually trying to get to the vote. And that is incredibly serious and a threat to our democracy. And whether it's the Russians or anyone else, we must safeguard those votes under any and all circumstances. And what I'm really afraid of is that all the different states are needlessly territorial and parochial. They, they don't know how to safeguard themselves against Russian or Chinese or Indian or any other hacker, right? And we have to get serious on a national level here to make sure that those votes are real and protected. I, that to me is by far the biggest news here and, and is really being overlooked by a lot of the other media. So uh, I totally agree on the stakes. Uh, we do have to be clear, and I'm sure you would have uh, if you'd continued, uh, that there are no allegations in these new indi indictments that the outcome of the election was affected by the particular right, things we're talking about here. Uh, also, Finally. there's no uh, allegations that any of the people who communicated uh, with those intelligence officials, which we'll, we'll get into um, how they were attempting to spread information and all of that, uh, knew that they were interacting with Russian intelligence officials. Now, some Republicans have gone a step beyond and said, this proves it didn't happen, which is not what Rod Rosenstein is saying. But they did make clear that they are not alleging those things um, at this point. But, but again, to the, the whole evidence argument, again, th this 29, I think, page it was, uh, indictment does not include the raw intelligence gathered or anything like that. But it says that these particular Russian officials, not some building, these particular people, they have the information on exactly what they did, but also that they were watching them in real time while they were planning it. We don't know for sure that it was US intelligence that was gathering it as the planning was happening, or if we are collaborating with some other foreign intelligence agency. But this is based on information both when the, the acts were actually done and during the planning and communication phases earlier with particular Russian intelligence officials. That, uh, that really suggests that the deep state dropped the ball. Yeah. yeah, like they really knew yeah. and then didn't do anything to uh, uh, avoid the outcome they were seeking to avoid. Yeah, if, if the deep state wanted Trump to lose, well, they got a curious way of showing it. Yeah. Okay, but look, one last thing before we get to Trump, which is, like, if you're at this point still saying, no, not enough evidence, I think maybe that the entirety of the FBI and the Justice Department might have made this up, and you think you're on the left, I mean, I don't know where you think you are on the political spectrum, but that's a lunatic conspiracy theory at this point. So I'm sure Alex Jones is saying similar things. And so I, it's up to you. you, you do whatever you want with your life, okay? But if you think that the Russians did not try to do this, man, okay, then you don't believe anything. Then you're in the camp of the, the, the Trump-like people who say everything is fake news, everything's contrived and everything's a conspiracy. And that is, that's loony. I've always been a follow the evidence kind of guy. And very early on in this conversation, people would say to me, you're a Russia skeptic. And I would always say, I'm, I'm an everything skeptic. That's my job, right? But uh, so early on, I would say, let's see where the evidence takes us. That's what I've said all along. And I have to say, at this point, man, this would have to be a very elaborate conspiracy to deceive the American people into thinking the Russians were trying to interfere because otherwise, as you said, you've got so many people about Rod Rosenstein and Mueller and all these things. It would take a lot to convince me that this isn't real at this point. Put it that way. And, and, and yeah, I, well, good. I'm glad to hear that. And I'm, I'm, you know, again, there were not meaningful dissents from the beginning. There would have, if, it, if these guys were making it up, if this was an orchestrated effort to make it seem like the Russians had engaged in behavior, they didn't. I imagine, like if you go see Shock and Awe, the number of intelligence officials who went to those Knight Ritter journalists or when they called them were like, this is not how we do things. They're making this up. This evidence does not exist. We're, there, that didn't happen. Right. That simply didn't happen. All right, so um, now let's move on to Trump. Oh, really fast, just for context, yeah. uh, because we have new numbers here, just to add to the total, because uh, interestingly, this information, which we just got today, uh, Donald Trump actually got earlier this week, Rod Rosenstein briefed the president on these new charges and the intelligence that was used to, to generate them. Um, but apparently it either didn't stick or he forgot because <laughs> Donald Trump, as of this morning, said, I think that we're being very hurt, hurt very badly by the, I would call it the witch hunt, I would call it the rigged witch hunt. I think that really hurts our country and it really hurts our relationship with Russia. So uh, just several days after being told extremely specific information about how this was actually done, he still calls it a witch hunt. Um, it's actually one of my favorite witch hunts. It's an exciting, dynamic one because we're now up to 100 criminal counts against 32 people and three co uh, companies. 
Among the people previously charged are 14 Russians, three Trump associates who have already pleaded guilty. There are five guilty pleas. One sentencing is already done. And uh, if you look out there, there's also an awesome photo from inside prison of Paul Manafort. So uh, oh. exciting times in the witch hunt. I think Paul Manafort, actually, because there was a Ben Nelson quality to Paul Manafort before, you know, where he just looked like that guy is fake and lying every, and I think he looks better. <laughs> like his in hair's, <laughs> in prison his hair's gone gray, it's grown out, he looks like a more of a regular guy, like you'd meet on a weekend and have a barbecue. <laughs> he, so he looks like he doesn't live in the capital anymore. That's right, that's right, that's right, yeah, yeah, he looks like a guy you could hang out with, yeah. yeah. So it's prisoner I for the guilty guy, or something like that. <laughs> that's it's right, it's, that's, it's, right. It's, that's right, that's right. That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right, but I think he looks better. Okay, so let's uh, let's talk a little bit about Trump. Obviously, the timing of these uh, new indictments is interesting uh, for us, for the media, but also especially for Donald Trump. Because he's got a high-profile summit coming up uh, very soon um, uh, with Vladimir Putin. I think it's actually in Helsinki on Monday. He's going to be having the summit. It's already previously been planned, but it is still expected uh, to go forward. Now, it might seem like perhaps Something this information was being released and these indictments were being timed to affect that. Rod Rosenstein said that's not the case. He says the timing of the indictments released is a function of the collection of the facts, the evidence, and the law, and a determination that it was sufficient to present the indictment uh, at this time. I guess could be true, but it certainly uh, I, I, is in the is in the air as this summit is coming up. I think up. we have to actually, I don't think it's terribly important, but it, it, you have to take that, I would say, at face value, because they've had any number of opportunities to drop balls at more damaging times, particularly the before the election. Like, so I can imagine that they just proceed rather to the oblivious extent that they... Possible. Although now they, they did also suggest that there'll be no report coming until after the midterms. No, I, I, these conspiracy theories... Look, I get it. You, you say, hey, look, the timing sounds suspicious. How's this? Uh, if you really wanted to embarrass Donald Trump, you wouldn't tell him any of this. Remember, he got uh, this information a couple of days before the public did, mm -hmm. right? And you would let him go and fawn over Putin, That's which right. is what he's almost mm -hmm. certainly That's going point. to do and would have done without this information. Uh, we had a wonderful relationship. We had a tremendous talk. He was a wonderful guy, etc. Then you would drop this and he'd look like a total jackass. If you wanted to embarrass Trump and you wanted to do the timing right, you wouldn't do it now. And then have on a, him on again a yeah. Friday afternoon, right? Friday right. Morning. Friday is morning. when it, Friday is when you release news you don't want people to cover, right? And then uh, it allows Trump to then come out of the here out of the meeting with Putin and go, I, I was very tough on him. I asked him about it, and he says he didn't do it. Right now, <laughs> I mean, whatever he's going to say something absurd. But it's if he was if he had like two brain cells to rub together, it would be a. It would be a softball. It would be a layup. I mean, yeah. oh, great. Oh, I went and yelled at Putin. You wouldn't believe how tough I was on him. You couldn't ask for better timing if you were Trump so, and with this information. So are you predicting that he is going to say, I was really tough on Putin? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm predicting that he'll say that, but he can't help himself. So he will follow up by saying, but we had a tremendous <laughs> meeting. And I think what's being done to Russia is very unfair. Yeah, I think, think we'll get that second part. I'm not sure he that he respects me. I, I was, no, I think you get, I was tough on him and he respects me. He heard, like, he said he didn't do it, but he's going to look into it. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. and, and as for your theory, I, I tend to agree with it. It makes a lot of sense to me. But with the uh, caveat that Trump is immune to a, a embarrassment yeah. and shame, he embarrasses himself eight times a week, yeah. and it doesn't matter. So what, what's one more embarrassment or less at the end of the day? I'm serious. Yeah, yeah no, you know I, 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 mean? my, yeah. I have a five-year-old daughter, and, and, and like when she starts crying hysterically, mostly it's because she's done something wrong and she got caught, and I, so I'm encouraged by that because she feels a degree of, oh, I shouldn't have done that. So I actually don't, like I, I usually, I, point, I laugh at her, right? I want it to go on and on and on. But Trump doesn't have that. There is, that doesn't, that, that little thing doesn't exist, and you see it sometimes in other kids, yeah. and I always think, Oh, psychopath coming. Hmm. You know? Yeah, right. yeah. Well, look, uh, so regardless of what the timing was, I mean, it is coming up right before the summit. And so some politicians, on technically on both sides of the aisle, have called on him to uh, postpone the meeting until Russia makes some sort of assurance that they're going to do something about what they have already done. And uh, we'll Chuck do Schumer, again. What's that? And we'll almost certainly do again, as Cenk was getting at, yes. because we, I imagine, I don't see North Carolina and Wisconsin and Indiana and all these states, but we got to tighten up.
We got trouble coming. I, I think Rhode Island's got it. Uh, so Chuck Schumer said uh, President Trump should cancel his meeting with Vladimir Putin until Russia takes demonstrable and transparent steps to prove that they won't interfere in future elections. Glad handing with Vladimir Putin on the heels of these indictments would be an insult to our democracy. Just the most recent one, I suppose. And uh, there was a tweet uh, with a statement from John McCain saying, if President Trump is not prepared to hold Putin accountable, the summit in Helsinki should not move forward. Uh, asked about this, Sarah Huckabee Sanders said, it's on. That was literally what she said. What does that mean? It's yeah, they're, they're doing the, the Oh, meeting. I see, okay. That. So, us reasonable progressives uh, are stuck in the middle here. Um, I don't know that I want to cancel the summit or spit in Putin's I face so or care. launch missiles or do, do whatever, right? Well, I don't want to launch missiles. I just want to be clear about that. <laughs> yeah, but you, you don't want him to do the summit. I don't care. Yeah, oh, that's what I was going to get at. So to us, look, I, I want him to meet with uh, Kim Jong-un. I want peace in North Korea, etc. But I don't want him to be a sucker and then have, have him say, oh, he's a great guy and he's gotten rid of all of his nukes. What well, he hasn't. That didn't help, right? I don't want, and so if he goes to Putin and he's actually negotiating on our behalf for things that are important in the world and to avoid further conflict, wonderful. But do you, anybody really think that that's what Donald Trump is gonna do? He's gonna go there and embarrass himself, embarrass us. He's gonna kiss Putin's ass and he's gonna give him whatever he wants. He went to NATO and said, well, they speak Russian in Crimea anyway. Why don't they just, you know, are you crazy? And he is, he just gives Russia everything they want. So he's gonna go to Putin and look, you know what I think. I, I think he's in his back pocket. But even if you don't think that, I, I'll tell you ahead of time like I always do. I guarantee you that he's gonna get nothing for us. And whatever Putin wants, he's gonna give it to him. So he might come out and, and declare that Crimea should be Russia. I don't know, but I know that we're not gonna get anything out of it. So it is, there's no point to it. So I don't want further conflict. And yes, there are some people out there who think, oh good, let's use this to drum up more conflict in the world. We're not in that class. But we're also not in the gullible class who thinks that Trump's gonna go to talk to Putin and get something good for America. That's look, just not gonna happen. For, Trump's, I mean, Putin's objective, look, no one wants war. No one, and there isn't going to be war, and that's not an issue, right? So that's a massive red herring. Trump got what he wanted. There is massive discord inside NATO. There's weakness and indecision and uncertainty on NATO's part about what they can count on from the United States of America. That emboldens aggressive uh, uh, autocrats like Vladimir Putin. He, that's a win. He has it. And by the way, that makes war more like Trump right. overall. Because if Trump warlike. goes and kisses his ass one more time, what's going to stop Putin from taking Estonia? And once he, if he does that and says, hey, Trump said uh, they speak Russian in Crimea, they speak Russian in Estonia. A lot of people in Estonia speak Russian. So I, you know, I use the Trump logic to take Estonia. Then war becomes more likely, not less likely. So here's, <clears throat> I, one of the things, I'll preface my comment by saying one of the things that's bothered me about a lot of the reactions to the Russia stories is that a lot of Democrats and a lot of pretty liberal people sound like they're trashing diplomacy. And I believe in diplomacy, and I believe we've got to keep talking to the Russians. They're the other nuclear superpower. I, I, I'm a backer of di diplomacy. We can't let that stop. But on this one, i got to say I'm, I, I take a fairly tough position, that part of diplomacy is you got to know when to say, no, the meeting's off. Because with this new information that's unacceptable, we'll get back to you at a later date, but it is not appropriate for two chiefs of state to meet while this, this is unresolved. So I would actually, for all of my talk for diplomacy, I, my first reaction, maybe I'll think about it more over the weekend, but my first reaction is to say, no, Trump ought to call it off. Yeah. As a, as a, that's diplomacy too, right? Acting tough. We're not canceling meetings. So, RJ, I'm glad you said that because the, the diplomacy that we're talking, we're not on the verge of war. When we're on the verge of war, you talk and you Keep talking and nobody walks out of the room, right? Because when people walk out of the room, then you're on, then you run the cusp, then you're on the cusp of, of missiles being launched. This isn't that. This is a long issue with diplomacy. Of course, we're all in favor of diplomacy, but diplomacy isn't a isn't only. Oh, I'm going to meet with this guy and have a giant summit of publicity stunt. Of course, I'm glad he talked to Kim theoretically, but the low level discussions are what's important anyway. And we weren't on the verge of war with North Korea. We're not now. We weren't before. So this is all. Nonsense. Diplomacy is a long game that we've been playing successfully in the parts in regarding NATO and the Soviets since 1945, effectively for 73 years. Okay, and Trump says, 
uh, in following up to his uh, message that the Russians should basically have Crimea, uh, he said, well, if it, w it, it was Obama's fault anyway. If I was president, he know he, he wouldn't have been able to do that. Well, hey, Donald Trump, good news for you. You're president now, and you have a chance to be so tough on Russia that they don't do anything like an aggressive action like that against the West again. Because that's your point about Obama. Oh, he let him take Crimea, right? Well, we just found out for sure that the Russians tried to interfere in our elections, not with tweets, but actually get into the ballot box. They tried to steal our elections. So are you going to let him get away with it? My guess is yes. In fact, in the first statement that he did, that the White House put out was, see, this shows that uh, Trump was never involved. Number one, of course, as usual, not true. It doesn't show that at all. They didn't speak to that. They, they said this is not about that. That's a different matter. This is about did the Russians actually hack into the DNC, Hillary Clinton's emails, and steal those emails? Yes, it was Russian intelligence officials that did that. And more importantly, in, in all of our minds, they tried to get into the ballot boxes, okay? Now, that's a thing you should be pissed about if you're the American president. You should be outraged by that. And there should be consequences, not military consequences, but something. So, because if there's no consequences, no sanctions, no anything, it's, you, why don't you just open up a sign that says China, anyone else, break into your ballot boxes anytime you like, we'll reward you afterwards. So, like Richard pointed out, part of diplomacy is also being tough. Tough doesn't mean war. I, if you're a neocon, that's all it ever means, right? But we're not neocons. We, we have the whole range of actions here. And if Trump goes there and he's done nothing so far, he's not showed 1% interest in actually protecting America. And he's president now. So is he going to protect America or is he only concerned about himself? And you know what the answer to that is. That's why every single comment so far has been me, 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 me. It's a witch hunt. Oh, they're coming to get me, but I'm innocent. How about us? You're supposed to be the president of the United States. You're supposed to represent us. And he does no such thing. So I, I don't want that embarrassment meeting with anyone. We have a, one more interesting wrinkle of this, but I think we should take our first break. All right, let's take a quick break and then uh, come back and talk. You want to talk about curious timing? We'll talk about curious timing. All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> See anyone you recognize? Maybe something you're curious about? It's okay. No need to be ashamed. I think it's normal to mull over the macabre from time to time. I mean, it just goes to show something about human nature. Why would we rather her had killed, you know, 650 people in all these awful ways? I mean, this is like... All right. <clears throat> Watching a little bit of political news while I build a wall. Ha <laughs> ha, it's kind of funny. Think about it. Let's see, where's the sun? Sounds kind of low. Do a little bit of bird hunting. Where did I see a lot of birds? There's some birds somewhere. A lot of times birds come land in here. Because I basically live in a bird house.
I don't know why the birds like coming in here so much, but they do. Young Turks, uh, Nuno Martins uh, writes in, uh, indictments aren't proof of anything. It's not evidence, you idiot. Okay. So, um, right about the first thing. Yeah, it's not, not proof not, of anything. Yeah, that's the second thing. It is yeah. evidence. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. You still get to have a trial. Yeah. Well, not guilty. It presupposes the existence of evidence. That's I mean, they'd that's have right. to be crazy to do this without any evidence at all. I mean, really, Nuno and uh, anybody else out there, you think that the Justice Department got together and they're like, what shall we invent today? Okay, let's just make up a bunch of things, present it to a grand jury, and uh, and have them believe it, have them do the indictment. But when we get into court, we'll be embarrassed because there'll be no evidence. That'll work out really great for us in our careers. Well, there never, there probably will never be a trial. That's right. Yeah, not yeah, they're not, there's them. not going to be a trial. Yeah, because uh, they're not. Putin's not going to send them over to. Trial. I hear you. By the way, sometimes it's done in absentia. But even if there's no trial. Okay, look, if you're in that camp and you think everyone in the government is everyone, not some people, not some people with a bias, etc., but is a liar and just makes up things out of whole cloth, okay, that's the camp you're in. I, I, I don't I Then think, I can't help you. I can't even communicate with you. I think we mix up things sometimes. I think that's a broad statement, but I'll try to be more specific. Uh, I think How do I tell if it's cooked? we mix up what people do with Russian messages. Find exactly. out right now. A, there are, is a kind of... The McCarthyite tinge to people will say, "Well, Bernie's an active agent." You know, you see these tweets uh, from Louise Mensch, whomever. I guess that was all right. That's outrageous, and it bothers me, and it's divisive, and it's hateful, mm -hmm. and it's all of those things. And nobody get, gets more pissed off about that stuff than I do. But when it gets to this point that they're indicting 12, 13 people by name, at that point, in my head, the burden of proof shifts. You got, you, you, you've got, now got a tall order to convince me that there is an evidence behind and this. They, look, that may not be proof of guilt, but no, there's evidence. And, and, and the Justice Department says, we tracked it. We know who exactly who did this. And On we, what date? Uh, and we can show you through the evidence that happens. Now, have they presented that in open court yet? No, they haven't. Okay, so go ahead and celebrate. Because now you think, well, since they didn't present it, I still get to pretend just, that I'm right. Just to the or, record. Or now I get to say, nope, nope, it's all made up. They all got in a room. Just because Gulf of Tonkin happened and other things happened in the past doesn't mean that everything the government does, like the mainstream media drives me crazy by assuming that everything the government does is true. But you can't make the opposite mistake. Everything the government does is a lie, total lie. They just got in a room, made up a bunch of stuff because they hate who? I don't know, liberals, conservatives, Trump. I don't know. But if you believe that, you're just not right. And, and they did have to present this to a grand jury. It's not just, they don't just get together and do it. They have to take it to a grand jury. Right. That's, and, pe that's regular people. And look, when James Clapper says X, Y, and Z happened, well, James Clapper is a perjurer. I don't believe James Clapper. When somebody goes in front of a grand jury and presents evidence and indictments are handed down, I say, well, you know, there's, there's, again, it's not proof of guilt, but there's evidence. There's so the, definitely evidence. So Richard makes a great point because almost everyone else in the establishment media and establishment politics loves James Clapper. Oh, James Clapper. No, James Clapper is a proven liar. So if you want to say that, hey, they, that's a very top-level government official that would clearly lied on the record, you would be right. 
He did. There should have been consequences for that, and I don't trust him at all. But because there's evidence that he lied, you could show that. It's right. clear, right? You have to figure out what's true and not true. It's easy to say everything's a conspiracy, everything is fake, or everything is true. Those are the easy parts. Waiting for daylight. <laughs> path is using your judgment to figure out what's true and what's not true. Okay, look, one last tweet, and then we really got to go. Uh, Ravon, uh, with a really nice tweet, I joined TYT today. Thank you. I appreciate it, brother. Yeah. What a terrible uh, noise. That's in order to become a member, it's tyt.com slash join. You get all of our shows. Uh, by the way, Anna's podcast is killing it. Uh, hashtag no filter. Uh, check that out, tyt.com slash audio. Uh, if you get the app, everything's convenient. tyt.com slash app. It's all there for you guys. And... Um, and uh, on Sunday, I'm going to go on reliable sources on CNN. Uh, I already taped it earlier today, uh, and it's a discussion of how progressive is there a way uh, to make this winning uh, everywhere. And, daylight uh, lasts longer. And how progressive media is on Game top play. of it. Uh, so, and I gave credit uh, to sure you guys, uh, the Young Turks audience. So please check that out. That's at 11 a.m. Eastern. Uh, on CNN. What do they do? They give you something for selling out, or do you just go do, you do it on your own? <laughs> yeah, I sold out by giving credit to the Young Turks audience. But like, what do you and get? And to progressives everywhere. Do you get money, or do you? Just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he asked me a question to see if I'd walk out too. So that's interesting. Okay. So uh, check out that curveball. All right, next. Okay. By the way, I am. I'm very glad to hear that Anna's podcast is killing it. It would be nice to have a podcast. Okay, I hear you, bro. Be really nice. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, no, her show is awesome. Okay, uh, let's talk about one more connection to what we were saying. Uh, within today's indictment, there is a really interesting connection uh, to one of the more noteworthy statements that Donald Trump made back during the last election. Uh, in case you have forgotten it, uh, here is what he said back in July of 2016. What do I have to get involved with Putin for? I have nothing to do with Putin. I've never spoken to him. I don't know anything about him other than he will respect me. He doesn't respect our president. And if it is Russia, which is probably not, nobody knows who it is, but if it is Russia, it's really bad for a different reason, because it shows how little respect they have for our country when they would hack into a major party. God, I don't want to go out there. But it would be interesting to see. I, I will tell you this. Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. I think you will probably be rewarded mightily by our press. Let's see if that happens. That'll be next. Mightily. Yes, and he was right. They actually were rewarded mightily. Uh, so there, uh, I still remember when that happened. I think we covered it live uh, during the RNC. Very exciting, noteworthy thing. Um, now, afterward, uh, he, some of the people around Donald Trump said he was just joking, which is uh, it's a good defense and a necessary defense because it's not Senate, often that a Senate presidential again, candidate made the same joke again. At the oh, yeah, yeah. No, I'm getting there. Uh, yeah, the, that a presidential candidate would encourage a country to hack into his opponent seems un-American, fundamentally, uh, anti-democratic, but he did it, and uh, it was just a joke, and he really liked the joke, so that same day, later that day, he tweeted, if Russia or any other country or person has Hillary Clinton's 33,000 illegally deleted emails, perhaps they should share them with the FBI. And so those were two great jokes that he told on July 27th of 2016. Uh, somewhere else in the world, something was happening on July 27th, 2016, but we didn't find out about it until the indictment came out today. And it could just be a coincidence, but one of the sections in the indictment says, the conspirators, that's the Russian uh, intelligence operation, spearfished individuals affiliated with the Clinton campaign throughout the summer of 2016. For example, on or about July 27th, 2016, the conspirators attempted after hours to spearfish for the first okay. time email accounts at a domain hosted by a third party provider and used by Clinton's personal office. At or around the same time, they also targeted 76 email addresses right. at the domain for the <clears throat> campaign. Out. campaign. I'm gonna that go across the river people. today. Okay. Could. Look, Not going down the cliff, though. Now, they had already been doing, they'd been planning for this sort of operation. They'd been doing various things that did not start on July 27th, but one particular part of it started on July 27th. So it, it, it's pretty bad for Trump that the day he begs Russia to hack into Democratic emails, they hack into Democratic emails on that same exact day. On the other hand, they probably would have done it anyway. It's not like they were waiting for Trump to say it, and they're like, oh, my God, okay, release the condor or whatever. I, I, I'm a contrarian here. I actually do think he was joking. 
I yeah, mean, uh -huh. that doesn't, it, it's not a material, it's not like hilarious, <laughs> but, you know, that I, was really, way I don't funnier. really get it, actually. <laughs> I, I think, you know, oh, you know, because Hillary's emails were missing. Hey, hey, Russia, find the emails. Now, I think, uh, look, I think, uh, I think he was joking. That's all I, I, I don't. I mean, yeah. Okay. Maybe, I mean, a if, stupid if Trump joke, was but... intimately involved, I. Okay, I'm shutting off the. I'm shutting off the commentary because I'm going into dangerous, dangerous land now. I need to concentrate. Those are red. Don't eat the red ones. Last time I was here, there were no cannibals. Let's see if I'm just as lucky this time. I don't see anyone. What the hell was that? What was that? Was that just my no me making a noise again? Oh, I just heard a big splash. Oh, that was scary, whatever that was. Oh good, it's gonna rain. Got some drugs. <laughs> Duct tape. Tennis ball. I'll never understand why it automatically gives you a tennis ball. Just, just don't understand. Oh, I heard someone. Finally. Ha ha! Come here, you! Oh, Christ. Oh, my God. 
Oh, that's scary shit. Come here. Oh my god. I drew first blood. Alright, I gotta get out of here. Too many of them. Whoa, that's scary shit. God. Run. Did I just hit him in the head? Oh my God, I did. I just got a headshot. That's right! And don't come back! Please! I'm taking the body with me. Why? I don't know. Oh, I think I'm supposed to burn this. Oh my god, that was really scary. Uh, don't judge me. You're supposed to do this, I think. I've been told. A long way to go. Alright, well that was really scary. That actually gave me like goosebumps. Like like really hardcore goosebumps. Holy crap. I can't believe I killed him with a headshot. Ha <laughs> ha! Alright. Well. It's all raw meat. Duct tape. I guess I'll take some of that. I think now that I've made contact, I think that means that they, they, they come looking for me more now. I think. Oh, God. That was really scary. I'm still not completely recovered from it. <clears throat> That headshot was complete luck.
I wish there was a quicker way to get the bow out. Um, like Q or I just don't know. Can't believe I've made contact with them now. It's really scary.
What is that? Oh. Not enough. What is this? Some kind of messed up club. I need to make a weapons rack. I still can't believe I got that guy in a head. I got a headshot on that guy. That was amazing. And it was the leader too. So when you, I guess when you kill the leader, they um, they all they all get scared and run away. Do I hear someone? Did I just, did I just hear cannibals somewhere? Let's go inside. Thank you. 
Alright, well, I'm gonna sleep tonight. Save. And now I have to wait till morning again, so I might as well watch something. I think he probably has some other way of contacting That's him. my <laughs> point. <laughs> That's yeah. what I so, meant to say. But, but, yeah. you know, but like, imagine, the fact is, the dates are the same, right? That we know, right? So, first of all, it makes no difference in the big... We know they did it. That's the kind of thing that can never be proven, nor should anybody particularly waste time trying to prove that. If anything, you know, uh, Lori Phil Martin, I think, is a great comedian. She, does, uh, she consistently just reverses things on a day, and she says... Uh, you know, President Clinton, two years after denying, after asking people to investigate Trump's campaign, the, the Ooh, water collector has the same date, right? And she just says, like, I should okay, so what do the this. Right do with this. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so like instantly all of us, you say you give him credit for joking. I say it doesn't matter. You guys are like, yeah, coincidence. With and we're all moving sticks, on, right? Because we know in and of itself, it's stupid. It's pointless. There's no way to know. And we obviously know we would have another manner of communicating. I mean, Sean Hannity would spend his entire show on this. There, and I, I have a water collector. Like, it's great. Isn't the world unfair? I suggest that they are better at this kind of politics. Because They're, you know why? Ben? Yeah, I do know why, but go ahead. You take it. Because they have no shame. That's right. That's right. Because they, like, we, if we thought, hey, it probably has nothing to do with it, we'll say that. Instead, which like, we if, if we had, yeah. which we just did. <laughs> if, if, if we... But they would look at it and go, it probably has nothing to do with it, right? Now let's go on air and tell them it has... The same big... day. The same day. Right. Like, yeah. they're, oh, they're, they're, you're telling me it's not a conspiracy. The globalists oh. global have done it on the same day. It was Rothschild sent the email on the same day as well, right? Mm -hmm. and so I'm going a little out of there, but Sean Hannity says the same things without the, the lunatic... They put, a July 4th, they put a July 4th, 1776 to June 27th, 2016 as the death of America. Right? You know, they are you know what else done. they don't have besides no shame or no scruples or whatever? They have no agenda. They have right. nothing that the American people want. So this is all the stuff they focus on to channel people's Protect resentments. And then you have the institutional Democrats in the middle who don't have an agenda either. So this becomes the dominant noise of the media because nobody's talking about the millionaires and billionaires and, and what's going on with the economy and how people are getting screwed. So this is what you get. They yeah. want to unrun the government, right? That's, the, that's their agenda. Leave it be. Leave everything be. Let's see what happens. It's, except the tax code. They want to make some like, changes. Say, there. Right, but, Maybe but, entitlements. They want to make some right, changes. Right, right. But no, but that's literally do nothing. Let's yeah. stop paying entitlements. Let's just stop doing everything. Yeah. And let's just see how it works out. And they don't want to run government. They don't want to do anything. And by the way, I mean, we're sort of speculating what would Sean Hannity do if there was this sort of connection. But look, look we, we don't have to speculate. Look what yeah. he's done with Pierce Strzok and Lisa Page for a year. It, every night, over and over, it led to one of the most ridiculous hearings in U.S. history yesterday. They went insane because of a couple of texts. They lost, the entire Republican Party has lost their mind for month after month after month after month because of a couple of texts. Yeah. Uh, but that's a great point. Literally, Trey Gowdy yesterday lost it over uh, uh, Strzok saying in one of the texts uh, that he would lose $100 million to zero, right? It's, it's an obvious joke. It's an obvious hyperbole joke. If we saw that from the other side, we'd never even take note of it, right? We'd be like, nobody actually thinks that somebody's going to win an election 100 million to zero. Gowdy was outraged. He's like, how could you say this? Are you saying it's not true? Is it true or not true? Did you say it or did you not say it? Like, what, you, what kind of a lunatic takes that seriously, mm -hmm. right? But they do. That's what they do day in, day out. So they would take but, something like this and have hearings on it. But they have a master narrative, and Democrats don't. And the master narrative is that the deep state is is taking everything from us, and the Democrats are the party of the elite, and this just proves it. So uh, America, you know, Republican base, get outraged. See, this is just more proof. They're just trying to stick it to your hero, right. Donald Trump. They have a narrative. What's the Democratic narrative? What do Democrats get people outraged and energized about? I'm not talking about us. I'm talking about the Democratic party. Those... What do they do to what get is all that? the registered voters boiled, in Rope? blood boiling, so they'll go out and vote in, no in November as as I can tell, not much. Well, we can actually transition to a potential master narrative that they can follow, or at least a particular type of candidate. Yeah. Okay. Unless you, you've one okay. last thing you want to say? No. No. no, no okay. No.
40 stones. We are currently in the middle a couch, of a bone chair. fight over what sort of candidates that the Democratic Party should be running and Deer what skin. sort of presidential candidate okay. could actually win in 2020 Rabbit against skin? Donald okay. Trump. And now we can add a to that lamp. a little bit of new data coming out of a survey done by YouGov. Uh, they asked a number of Americans the question, what is that? Um, do you want a candidate that is more like Bernie Decorative Sanders skull, or less like Bernie Sanders? Trophy, and here are the numbers. 57% uh, of Democratic respondents said more like what Bernie Sanders. Display? Only 16% said less and 27% oh, weren't sure. I mean, I Wait think until I have a they bunch get a load of, of him once they see Bird him House, uh, actually being cute. covered by the media. So those are pretty overwhelming numbers. And I don't think if you had polled most in the media, certainly not in the Democratic leadership, they would have guessed the level of support for candidates more like Bernie. Right. Yeah, sixteen no. percent where it's all super delegates, by the way. Every one of people are right Rabbit the trap. Nice. So yeah, Leaf pile I, trap. Look, I trap. If you see the number fifty seven percent, that's already a great, great number. Uh, but I, I'm trap. afraid that and this hasn't happened yet to be fair. I'm afraid that some people report just as fifty seven, uh, leading you to name. think that there's forty three on the other side. There yeah. isn't. Catapult. Only sixteen percent said no, I don't want that's Democratic candidates spikes. to be like Bernie Sanders. That is a very, very low number. So this is Excellent news. Yeah. And then uh, on top of that, they continued by saying only, and, and this is Newsweek, I'm quoting, only 13% of Republicans said they want to set up camp. To be more like Did I not Sanders. set up camp yet? What do you mean only? 13% of Republicans. Yeah. You know how the uh, establishment Democrats always say, no, 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 we got to be more right wing, we got to be more corporate. Oh. Hello, to get birds. Republican voters to vote for us. If we got 13% of Republican voters to vote for us, we'd win every election. What do you think? Right? Uh, I asked this in the meeting this morning. What do you, how many Republican voters do you think would respond affirmatively to we would like more Democratic candidates to be like Hillary Clinton? Uh, negative <laughs> 10. Shut up. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. right. Uh, like, seriously. It, 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 unless, it, unless they interpret it as, yeah, all of them, because we'll never, never lose. Right. 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 And I say seriously, so some wise guys are you can't actually get negative 10. Okay. So. Oh, and just, just to be clear, the question isn't that do you want the Democratic candidates to be more like Bernie Sanders. It's do you want the person running for Congress to be more like yes. uh, Bernie Sanders, which means that a lot of Republicans want their candidate to be more like Bernie Sanders. So when 13%. the Democratic Party is out there shooting down candidates that are like Bernie Sanders mm -hmm. in congressional races in Texas and all around the country, yeah. they're shooting themselves in the foot, which is what we suspected for a long time, yeah. I think. Now, can I muddy the waters a little bit with the unfortunate part of the data? Mm -hmm. um, which, of course, we can interpret nice in theories of my own based on my time in, in Plaisai. Uh, independents were split. 27% said more like Sanders, while 35% said less, and 38% said not sure. So there's a lot of not sure, higher than in the other two categories. But that's not the numbers exactly you'd want to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would have thought that the independent numbers would be stronger, uh, to I, be honest. My argument, uh, we we... I was going to say, I think in the meeting I said we mythologize uh, independent voters, but I don't think. I think that the media in America generally fetishizes independence and has ideas about it that are not actually borne out in the data. Um, this idea that a lot of people just, you know what, I, I go one way on one issue, I go another on another, I just think about it, I just come up with it. I'm not talking Okay, let's go like back to that yeah. spot again. That, that is not how value systems work, and that's not how ideologies work generally although not universally and this is not about this is not about party identification necessarily this is about people who like haven't really got into it um it's it's a lower level of political information a lower level of political sophistication so they don't have and, an attachment to either party necessarily and to add to that uh there's been research that shows that independent voters are very rarely that genuinely independent that's person right, right. they're they all oh in one green direction republican or um, green democrat so, so they're really Modern not, and then the rest just don't know it. So because they, you know, but but at the same time, guys, independents do matter. Okay? Of course, oh, of course, course. And, and so now the counter information to this, which actually uh, jives with what John is saying, is uh, Bernie Sanders did far better with independents than Hillary Clinton did in 2016. That was borne out by all the polling. Yeah. Okay, and I would say scream about it every day on the air. So, number one, we should be consistent. If we thought independents were important then. They're still important the Independents who voted in the Democratic front. Yeah, no, no, no. But also in the polls, the polls how polls, they yeah, would have yeah. voted in the general election. Right. Okay. Right. Uh, independents who vote. Right. Those but okay, so now, plain acts. So what is the difference between those independents back meat. then, a couple of years ago, and, and the polling today? Independents are low information. They, they don't, they get less information generally than the partisans of Republicans or Democrats, right? Back then, Bernie was in the news more, and he was uh, giving okay. speeches, etc. Okay, that's how you do it. So now, 
Modern Axe, Lane Axe. Or my kids could go to college too. Maybe I kind of like that. Weak and Spear. And among independents were way better. Crafted what Bow. Okay, good. You don't see so four is now a bow. Right? Is nice. So Knew there was a way to do it. By the way, aided and abetted by the mainstream, who nonstop yeah. talks about his socialism. You could go online anywhere, including at the comment section of this video. You will have right wing trolls saying, oh, they just want everything for nothing, right? And if a low information voter hears that for the moment being, and he thinks, oh, well, I don't want to give away everything for nothing, <laughs> right? right? So, but, but that's why you have elections. And okay, I'm going to pause this again. And let's go. Go fight again. All right, right up here is where I made contact with them. I need to make a zip line from here over to there. being all sneaky. Oh shit, it's a gray one. Oh shit, it's a gray one. There's a gray guy. Where is he? Shit. Where'd he go? There he is. <gasps> 
three of them. That must be some kind of a route that they go on or something. Oh my god, I suck. Oh my god, I suck. How many arrows have I used? I'm down to 10. I'm running. A lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. Oh my god, that was really scary. Oh my god, did I just get another fucking headshot? Run. Oh my god, that's scary. I still have 10. Holy crap. This gray guy's really scary. He was so quiet until he was right on me. I'm going back to camp. Too scary. Too scary. I need to, um... I think I need to build a second base over here so that when I kill them, because I need, um, as awful as it sounds, I need their bones <laughs> to make armor. All right, let's get the hell out of here. Dried meat. Oh, 
What was that? Is it a lizard or a person? Or a cannibal? That was a lizard. Yeah. So what I need to do... Is I need to make... Um, I need to make another camp over there. Like a secondary camp. So I can make a bonfire. And, uh... Whew, I tell ya. This game is... startling. I heard that gray guy come running up on me. Oh my god. I'm probably gonna play tonight, but I can't record because I'll be home. Which is fine, because if I'm just going to build over there, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to live stream me building again, probably. Whenever I have to build a lot, I think I'm, from now on, just going to, uh, do it off camera. Is that Dory? Nope, it's not. Need to get some water. <gasps> Man, those gray guys are scary.
I, I'm gonna make a um, arrow holder. Seriously, one more. Is there a, uh, this and this, what's that? What is it? A flaming rock? The fuck is that? Um, Plain axe. I'm gonna make that number two. So two. Two is this. One is this. Three. I should really make this number two. I'm gonna do that. Two. 
Oh, whatever, I'll do it some other time. Clothes outfit, blue jeans and gray shirt. Gray long shirt and black jeans. Closed shirt with khaki jeans. Blue jeans and gray shirt. Gray long shirt. Uh, I think I'm going to equip this one. Okay. I think I'm done. Yeah. Alright. I'm going to go off for a little while. Yep, that's it for now. Well, actually, first I'm going to eat. Actually, it doesn't matter because I saved already. Yep, I'm out of here.